Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff review on the latest release from Boy Smells, Boy Smells Banana Pudding Candle. But before we dig into that, if you're new to Touch Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com and follow me over on Instagram, also at touchthefiretwice. But for now, let's dig into banana pudding. So this was a surprise, I think for me, at least coming from Boy Smells, they're known for really conceptual, earthy, woody, spicy, botanical, dark, light, juxtaposed fragrance builds that have a complexity and a fluidity to them. And they're not one for foodie gourmand type scents typically, but it makes a little more sense when you realize it is a collaboration with Magnolia Bakery from New York City. So as I do with all my in-depth sniff reviews, we will unbox this, talk about the actual candle product itself. I will read you the brand scent story, what they describe the fragrance to evoke, what they expect you to feel from it. I'll get my nose on it and tell you what I think as far as, you know, is there a mood, moment, memory, space, place, or time that this evokes for me or transports me to. Then we'll go deep down into the notes. So as this is a fine home fragrance, there is a pyramid of top, middle, bottom notes, I think around nine in this fragrance that they've shared with us. And we'll do a little bit of education together to say, okay, what is Alimi? What is Davana? Where is it from? How is it used in fine fragrance? What does it smell like? Do I get that in the candle? Do I like it? So that we're kind of building this scent library, the scent notes library in our mind's eye, mind's nose to understand what we like, what we don't like when we're buying something you know, off the shelf or online to again, really start to build on those scent memories that this will create if and when you burn it. And finally, what I would typically do in a review like this is a comparison review where I compare it to other candles or fragrances that you may be familiar with. In this case, which I'll get into later on, this is so unlike any other banana fragrance that I've smelled before that there really was no need to do a comparison review because the banana stands alone. So let's get into the packaging. This is a really fun variation on the traditional pink packaging for the 8.5 ounce single wick candles at Boy Smells. As you can see right on here, it is a collaboration with Magnolia Bakery. It is a limited edition candle, their traditional single wick 8.5 ounce in a translucent, shiny, golden banana colored glass jar. Their coconut beeswax blend and retails for $48. Now, before I dig into the scent story, getting into what the brand has shared on this, if you're not familiar with Magnolia Bakery, it opened in 1996 in New York City. The original is still there on the Bleecker Street in the West Village. And they're commonly regarded as sort of starting and kicking off the cupcake craze of the late 90s and early 2000s. They were featured in a ton of media across TV shows and movies. They were big on Sex and the City. Carrie waited outside and had a cupcake at Magnolia Bakery. And they're known for not just their cupcakes and cakes, but very famously their banana pudding. They actually released a cookbook with the recipe for many of their baked goods and confectionaries. I've made the banana pudding before because I'm a fan of banana pudding. Their version is very sweet. And essentially it is just sweetened condensed milk mixed with instant vanilla pudding. You have that. Then you whip up some heavy cream. You blend or fold the heavy cream with that sweetened condensed milk vanilla pudding. And you simply layer that with sliced bananas and your traditional Nella wafers, those Nella vanilla cookies. So very straightforward, good, but so sweet. The sweetened condensed milk is probably what makes people love it and really get that sugar bomb addiction to it. But it I like sweet, I have a sweet tooth, but it's, 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 I can only have a little bit of it. It's very, very sweet, but still delicious. Now this candle, as they say, bananas never smelled this salacious because though it's called banana pudding, straightforward name on this candle, it is in the fruity, smoky fragrance family, which if you've seen any of the branding or marketing for this fragrance, they're going all out here on the darker, naughtier, or just richer, more seductive side of banana pudding, I suppose. And as the brand shares, the best of Magnolia Bakery's iconic pudding with an added smoldering sensuality. The creamy classic banana and notes of vanilla are softened while moody undertones of burning guaiac and leather are turned up. Cardamom spice and alini resin add a refined smokiness to this deliciousness, a sinful dessert made even more sinful. All right, so if you wanted a gourmand pudding fragrance, you probably didn't expect there to be cardamom, alini resin, guaiac wood, cedar wood, and oh, by the way, patchouli and cardamom and jasmine as well. We'll get deeper into that. But first, let me get my nose on it. So this is not your grandma nor your auntie's banana pudding. 
So stop if you want gourmand, ooey gooey banana, cookie, vanilla, pudding, creamy. This is not it. Now, Boy Smells is known for being conceptual, but even a watermelon candle from them is going to be the green watermelon rind with some cedar, patchouli, and amber. So expect the unexpected with Boy Smells. So with this, there is a sweetness. Um, it does not immediately read banana to me, but there is a creaminess. Now they say the creamy classic banana and vanilla notes are softened. I would dare say that the vanilla is more than softened, it's like almost removed and replaced with some other vanilla-like fragrances that we'll get into as we get deeper into this. The creaminess that I get feels like a dry, woody creaminess, likely from the guayac wood, and not uh, a supple gourmand vanilla, let alone pudding, milkiness, um, nor even an earthy tonka like you might expect them to go for. Now, there is banana when I look for it, but I don't know that anyone would call out banana if they weren't asked, do you smell banana in this? But I do think it is there and I, and I trust them. But if anything, it really is kind of an overripe, while also something slightly artificial towards that runts banana, ripe, sensual, bordering on musky, which again, the banana is not <laughs> musky typically. I think it's some other notes that are carrying that for us. So that slight musky sweetness could perhaps be from some jasmine petals that are in the mid notes here. What you get a lot of are some of those base notes in here. So there's like a dried, leathery, it, they don't have the note papyrus listed, but it almost feels kind of papyrus-like to me, that dried, leathery, dusty old book, which is probably the guayac wood. There's a divana herb, which we'll get into when we go through all the notes together, but that adds sort of an additional dried aspect, a bit of a sharpness of tea with some sweet balsamic undertones. There is a bit of cardamom that, you know, I think it's probably a black cardamom, which will add an earthy kind of suede-like aspect because there is leather, suede, not so much smoke. Don't think full on, you know, a faux de bois, firewood, campfire, but certainly suede and leather. And there's also a heavy hit of a very soft, sweet cedar wood, earthy cedar, and a little bit of musky patchouli oil. So I will say I like it. I almost would wear it perhaps, uh, as as a, a body fragrance. It's not what I'd even really consider a variation on banana pudding though, at all. Frankly, I, I'm left to wonder, had it not been a branded partnership collaboration, I wouldn't think they would release a candle with this name, banana pudding. It's a slightly sweet, ripe, soft, woody, not quite smoke, a little bit of leather, suede-like fragrance that I do enjoy regardless. But I don't know, is it, cowboy ranch banana pudding on a desert night by the bonfire. You, you tell me what you smell with this candle. I really wanna know. Getting into performance, cause I have burned this just twice, but I got a, a decent read on the fragrance. I will say like, I'd say all boy smells at this point, unfortunately for me, it did require performance assistance in the form of the aluminum foil tent sleeve around the top of the candle. It did pull out with the help of that. The unfortunate thing is once it had a, decently healthy pool, you know, not super deep, but enough, a, a true full pool across, and it was getting good throw and projection, which I'll talk about in a second. I took the foil off, and within 30 minutes, the wax started to harden around the edge, going into the center here, and it would have become very much a tunneled candle had I let that go. So it's disappointing because with many single wick and luxury fine fragrance candles like this, of this you know, general size and diameter with a single wick. They require that assistance with the foil wrap, but most, not all, but most of the time you can take that off and then it burns fine. Once it's got that full pull. This one, it's got a full pull, you take it off and you're risking tunneling once again, which is quite frankly, I would almost say unacceptable paying $48 for eight and a half ounces of wax. I really wish that the fine fragrance companies that launch all these candles, and this goes for Boy Smells, this goes for Ness, this goes for Lafco, this goes for Diptyque, been around for generations. I really wish they would do something in the scientific side of candle making to get a better formulation of wax, because this happens with soy, it happens even with paraffin, it happens certainly with you know apricot, coconut, beeswax. It's just something that, it's a shame, and I can frankly understand why people don't want to spend 30, 40, 80, 100 plus dollars on eight ounces of wax in a single wick candle when you can buy a 14.5 ounce three wick candle at Bath & Body Works or similar brands for eight to $12 that is gonna pull out 
almost always. So it's, I don't, I don't know if it's just something that the world is stuck with, but I just really feel like there's, there must be some solution to it from the science side of things. So that's my little rant. It's frustrating. It is what it is. Usually once you get further down into the candle, it will correct itself somewhat, but with voicemails, I don't know that I've ever successfully burned a candle without it requiring assistance. That said, the strength throw and projection was healthy with the assistance of the foil wrap. Early on, before it even fully pulled, there was a healthy throw. I would say strength itself of the fragrance carrying was probably a medium, but really a high for projection and throw. Really, it went through my main level up the stairwell into my loft, so I could smell whiffs and wafts of it throughout the space. So very healthy as far as the projection actually once it was in the air. It's just it took some assistance to get there. Now let's dig into the notes. As you can see, there are nine notes here. We're going to fly-ish through them because I know that that's it's a lot of information and some of you love that and I love that you love that. Others are like, okay, get to it or maybe they click away. So you know what? If you're here, you're here for a reason. So let's, let's stick together and, and go through these notes. First one, banana. Everyone knows banana, sweet, creamy, tropical, fruity scent. Sometimes when banana is used in fine fragrance, you can get a hint of jasmine or lang lang, sometimes green undertones. In some, I'm gonna call likely rare <laughs> cases, uh, the juice of the fruit is actually distilled, but more likely it's gonna be synthetic. Oftentimes having that artificial candied runts, taffy, banana flavor that we're all familiar with. And then sometimes the leaves of banana are used in perfumery as well. Less sweet, more green, and somewhat subtle. Then we've got Elimi. Elimi is a pale yellow resin tapped from the Manila Elimi tree in the Philippines. It's said to be a very fresh, spicy, sharp, piney, balsamic, lemon citrus resin. It's used in incense, it's a perfume fixative, and also said to be an herbal remedy. A bit of a surprise in banana pudding, although I guess most of these notes are a bit of a surprise, jasmine petals. Jasmine gives a richness and intensity to fragrances, a sweet floral note, but with a dead sexy, sultry muskiness to it. Different concentrations or absolutes of jasmine can be medicinal, sweet, musky, green, but it is that traditional heady, musky, sensual, animalic floral. Divana, which was new to me actually, is an herb of the silver-leafed Artemisia family, native to India. When it is steam distilled, it has a sweet tea-like smell, they say reminiscent of dried fruit, but also carrying sharp, herbal, bitter undertones, green notes and balsamic undertones. Then of course, cardamom. A lot of folks are familiar with cardamom. The seeds are warm, spicy, camphoraceous, medicinal, somewhat similar sometimes to how eucalyptus is expressed in a fragrance. It becomes more woody, floral, and sweet over time. And it is the main ingredient in chai, if you're familiar with masala chai tea. And there are kind of two types of cardamom. So there's the earthy, smoky, black cardamom, and the fresher, more almost minty, eucalyptus-like green cardamom. The black cardamom works in exotic kind of amber blends. It becomes soft suede-like, while the aromatic green cardamom adds that fresh, brightness to fragrances with that airy, minty, eucalyptus-like astringency. Then we've got cedar wood, which is probably, as I've said in many videos, my favorite wood if I had to choose. It's deep, dark, resinous, softly woody, earthy, sweet. It can be spicy or camphoraceous, cooling. Think of those pencil shavings. It's less minty than pine and less musky than patchouli. And there are many types of cedar. There's true cedars, there are juniper cypresses that are also used in place of cedar, but it is that comforting, resinous, woody, somewhat sweet wood. And then our final two base notes, we have patchouli, which is that strong, slightly sweet, herbaceous, spicy, intoxicating scent. It has a dark, musky, earthy profile. Now, depending on the distillation methods, there are really two expressions of patchouli. So the first is the traditional Indonesian patchouli distillation method, which will give you kind of some floral sweetness on its initial note, and then rich root-like notes, a delicate earthiness, swampy, barnyard-like, but not full-on musty. And then there's the European or American distillation methods for patchouli that will give you a very rich, sweet, spicy, aromatic herbaceousness with an almost added fruity or wine-like sweetness and less of the woody earthy notes. For me, I feel like this actually probably leans a little bit more toward the sweetness balanced with the delicate earthiness of the Indonesian patchouli. And then finally, guayak wood. Guayak wood can range from sweet balsamic vanilla-like to woody, smoky, leathery, and tar-like. There can be hints of tobacco or the whiff of burning leaves in winter. 
think woody, sweet, spicy. And for me, I believe a lot of what I'm smelling in this fragrance, the sweetness, the vanilla, the woody, the leathery, the whiff of burning leaves even, I think all comes from this guaiac with the other notes, of course, blended in with that heavy hit of a soft, sweet cedar. But guaiac wood really is, for me, almost the star of the show as a very prominent bass note. And so those are the notes for banana pudding. All told, again, I enjoy it. I like the fragrance. When I look for it, there's a sweetness that is reminiscent of banana. They're really asking everyone to really suspend disbelief, which is a phrase used in art or in, in theater, especially when there's something happening on the stage in front of you that is just not possible. I don't believe this is happening. And to be in on the game, to be willing to go on the journey, you have to suspend your disbelief. That is what you need to do for this candle. If you want this to be banana pudding and you want it to taste ooey gooey, creamy caramel, like a Homeworks candle or a Kringle or a million other brands out there, and I'm not saying that disrespectfully, just truthfully, this is not it. You can have those ooey gooey, authentic gourmands and there's a time and place for them. This, you must suspend your disbelief and know that this is inspired by banana pudding. It is not scented like banana pudding. That's a key difference. If you know the brand, you're not surprised, but if someone's just first being introduced to Boy Smells and they see this candle at Magnolia Bakery because it did launch, I believe, in a couple of the locations around the country, they might be very confused as to why they're smelling wood and leather and suede and spiciness in banana pudding because it certainly does not taste like that when you get a big old scoop of it or a carton of it from the bakery. Now again, I say that I often do comparison reviews. I consider doing a comparison with three candles. I'll just tell you what they were, even though I'm not going to do the true side-by-side -side sniff because there's truly no need. One was going to be Beth Mudrick's Banana Walnut Muffin. We know that is artificial, muffin-like. It's gourmand, it's baked good, whether it was pancakes or muffin or scone or insert baked good of the moment here. I wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. I burned it before, it's not my favorite, not very authentic. I know a lot of people love it. I like it for what it is, but of course it smells nothing like this. Then Homeworks Banana Maple Pancakes, which is probably the most authentic banana I've smelled in a fragrance because though it's somewhat artificial, there is almost like a borderline fermented, very, very overripe, mashed up banana, like mashed into the pancakes, then a fresh, you know, yellow green banana sliced on top. It really is mushed up into the pancake batter. I know a lot of people also love that candle. I actually burned it last year for the first time and I did enjoy it. I would probably buy it again if performance issues were corrected. And then finally, Emmy NYC recently released a banana milk candle, which I did review here actually, if you wanna check that out. And that is mostly the sort of artificial banana candied confection that you're used to mixed with a creamy milk. So if you want something that is milky and banana-like, not quite pudding because it doesn't have a vanilla aspect to it, but it might fit the bill if this is not your bag when it comes to this sensual, sweet, ripe banana pudding. So that is my in-depth sniff and let's call it comparison review with the Boy Smells and Magnolia Bakery collaboration candle of banana pudding. Let me know your thoughts if you've got your nose on this, what you think. Do you like that they're doing something that is banana pudding inspired? Are you annoyed that it is nothing like banana pudding itself? What are your thoughts? Love to hear them. And until next time, take care.